Hello and welcome to the first of uh, five Greylog Tech Talks. This is Brad Six, Technical Product Evangelist at Greylog, and I'm here with Nick Carsonson, Security and Integrations Product Manager at Greylog. In today's Tech Talk, we're going to talk about uh, VPN, fire, VPN and firewall logs and how Greylog can help support a remote workforce. With uh, the situation uh, today, um, uh, the companies are facing, there's a massive surge in remote workers. Uh, the surge can greatly increase VPN and firewall traffic. Monitoring VPN and firewall logs and gray log can help safeguard orga and organize um, your organization by allowing you to view uh, where inbound connections are coming from, uh, the state of your VPN license count, and will allow you to monitor your workforce uh, and where they're logging in from. Nick is here to help us understand how Greylog can help out. Um, Nick, um, what are some of the best practices and possibly some of the uh, configuration changes uh, you would recommend to effectively deal with a situation like this? Um, do you want to switch the slide? There you go. Yeah. All right, thanks. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of issues that come up when people want to monitor VPN and firewall logs. And the ones that we see the most in the industry are just around the fact that each firewall has its own different log format. You'll also notice that each version of this format can change. Probably the most popular firewall right now is either between Cisco ASA or Palo Alto's firewalls. And in the versions between like a Palo Alto 8 and a Palo Alto 9, there's more metadata fields in there. They put in a whole new session around SD-WAN. So your current parsers might not work. Uh, they might not get the same data that you're looking for. So it's a constant battle to keep up with the new parsers, the new fields that firewall logs have. The other side of that too is how most people don't know what level to log at. On some of them, like an ASA firewall, if you log at informational, you get normal log messages, you get buildups, teardowns. Um, if you put to debug, you get a lot more log data. And some of these can have exponential growth in your log data patterns, where normally maybe you get a million logs, but now you're up to 5 million logs if you put it in debug mode. And there has to be that understanding of what settings do you need to have around there. Um, a lot of what Greylog recommends is out in our community forums as far as what levels to set that at. But a lot of that also has to determine what do you guys want to see in your logs? Are you wanting to see the buildup and teardown messages? Or do you just want to see when a session gets denied or allowed? Another big one that we have that we run into is how do you get logs in? Some firewalls, and I'd say most of them, do come in via the syslog format. It's very easy to point to Greylog. There are some of those proprietary firewalls like Checkpoint that has the OPSEC LIA protocol that does take a special agent to go off and query that and pull those logs in. And kind of the last one that plays into everything that Greylog does is it's confusing. I mean, firewall logs, I have an example on the right side there. This is a Checkpoint log. You can see that there's a lot of information in that log. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And it takes you 20 seconds to kind of look through that log message and understand what's actually happening in that. In this case here, it's just it's an app application monitoring rule that's getting blocked, but um, you can see that it's there. So it's how do we summarize this and make it easier for you guys to use and get quick data out of that? Those uh, are the main perfect. reasons people aren't monitoring these out. Uh, perfect. Thank you, Nick. Uh, what tips and tricks can you recommend that would help a company successfully start doing their VPN of firewall logs? Yeah, obviously first, like we talked about getting that the right setting around the audit level is key. So we want to get the right logs coming in, and that's going to depend on your firewall version. But then past then, there's a few things that I've kind of li listed them out there of things you want to do. Uh, the first thing you want to do is put into a schema that we can use, and Greylog is coming out with our own schema that would normalize these data points into specific fields. So that way you can create dashboards around, let's say, a source IP, and it's always going to show up no matter what firewall version you have. But you also want to normalize that data when you bring it in, so you break that big log message that you saw before into easy to read fields. And that's done through pipeline, pipeline rules, excuse me, and enrichment. And you can see over on the right side there, this is one of the firewalls that I have at my house. Um, it's a PFSense. There's five different stages there of normalizing rules. So this does come into the pipelines to understand how to break apart the log message and then do additional checks. In mine here, there's ones that check for an RFC 1918 address to tell if it's internal or external. I also have ones in there that do threat intelligence lookups. So for every source IP or destination IP, it'll bounce it off the threat feed and say, go off and find, is this good or bad? And then I can also do things around the geolocation. So I can say, is this coming from you know, China or Russia or the US or wherever it's at? I can pin that and then we can plot that on a map. 
So you can start to see this stuff and kind of tying back to the, the original finding about VPN is where are my people VPNing in from? If I can get that VPN login and say it's coming from, let's say Brazil, but you don't have anybody in Brazil, maybe that should be an alert to you and you can fire one of those off. Um, the next kind of things that we also recommend is setting up the right indexes. A lot of times people need to keep firewall logs for a longer time. Maybe you need to keep those for 90 days, but the rest of your logs you only need for 30 days. So we can set that around the indexing times. We want our own stream to separate that data out for role-based access permissions. And then again, the retention time of, I need to keep this for so long. Now, some of these have pre-built dashboards out at our community forum. Again, here at GreatLab, we're gonna start releasing these out as well based around our schema. So you can have some network type dashboards that show you this in a visualized format, as well as have good investigation templates. You wanna have a quick way to see an IP address and then click on it and drill down into it and see what other hosts did it talk to, how many bytes in, bytes out did it you know, transmit, things like that. Um, and then that last one I briefly mentioned before, but it's really threat intelligence. I mean, obviously you wanna know, are these IPs good or bad? You guys get millions of logs a day and you wanna make sure that you're spending your time where it's appropriate and only on the ones that are true threats and not just generic noise. All right, thanks. Um... Uh, what types of items would you recommend looking for in your log? So uh, what, what would you set up an alert for? Yeah. Um, so some of these would be around things like unusual logons. So do you want to know when somebody's coming into your organization that normally doesn't? Right now, like you mentioned, a lot of people are working from home. We want to know these accounts. You know, you're at home, you might get your credentials stolen a little more easily because you could be working on your own personal computer that doesn't have the company's security standards on that. Maybe your credentials got compromised. For your corporate environment. Um, now, instead of, you know, me, I, I work out of Colorado myself, maybe and my credentials are getting used out of, um, well, let's say the Netherlands, you know, somewhere else. And you want to be able to detect that and see that pattern. So what we can do is actually create rules inside of Greylog in our alerting system. Like you can kind of see there, I have an example one that's saying I'm looking for a VPN policy type rule. This is me logging on to the system. And if it's not coming from the U.S. since I live in the U.S. And we can get down farther if you want to go to the city if you want to, too. But with this, then we can look for these every five minutes in this case, and then go ahead and fire an alarm when I see that happen. And it's going to be all based around that username. Um, you can also look for things around the time of day if you want to have something looking in the afternoon or in the evening, or maybe how many times is it happening. So this is where people log on from multiple locations at once. You know, I should only log on one time from, from one IP, but if I'm logging in three different times within five minutes, maybe that's a issue you want to look at. And some of these two with dashboards, you can start to see, you know, what times a day am I logging on? You know, most of your users probably log on around six to seven in the morning, go off about five or six at night. If you start seeing people logging on at two in the morning, maybe there's something you want to check in and drill into that. All right, perfect. That's great. Uh, why can't you tell me about VPN and firewall licensing limits and, and how that plays into a, a concern for a company? Yeah, this one goes back well, about 10 years for me personally. I used to run a company, um, company's firewall, and we had a VPN policy as well, and it was a big snow day um, where I was, and we ran out of licenses. It was on an ASA firewall, and you didn't know it until people just can't start VPNing in. So then you start going through, doing all your investigation, and you assume the firewall broke or something's happening, when really all you did is run out of licenses on your VPN account. So with Greylog, if we can capture your VPN sessions coming in, Every hour we could run a rule, kind of like I have set up over here, but it's just looking for a number of concurrent connections that are open in your firewall. In this case, at the very bottom right, you see I have a 50 threshold, but this can be an arbitrary number that you set. I would probably set it something like 90% of your license limit. So that way at the 90% marker, you're getting an alert every hour that's saying, hey, you're reaching your threshold. Maybe you need to upgrade your license or you need to see if people are really active on those VPN connections. But this would help you kind of avoid some of those trouble situations where people can't get in that need to get in. And also just keep an idea of how many people are actually on your network at any one time. All right, great, thank you. Uh, what if a security team doesn't have the bandwidth to, uh, to view the logs uh, from the VPN or firewall? Um, you know, there's a, a lot of teams that, that just don't have the bandwidth or the, the personnel to do that. Uh, what can you, you know, suggest a, that a company can do around that situation. Yeah, definitely. This comes uh, from a couple different accesses there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the first one here is the archiving that we brought up and that I thought about. 
a lot of times, you know, I have some friends that are working in the medical industry right now, and I'm thinking, this is this is great, right? Uh, you guys are probably having the greatest time of your lives. Um, the money has to be flowing in because of all the issues that are going on. But they, they said, I don't have time to do anything. They, they're just trying to keep the lights on. They're fighting fires as fast as they can. They can't check their tools that they have out there, their IPSs, their firewalls, their different logging solutions. They don't have the time right now. So what we need to do in grid log is set up our archiving for our logs. So that way we can set these and keep them for an indefinite amount of time. And once everything settles down in the future, we can actually go back and re-import these in through our archive ability and look at those logs and look for the different patterns that might have happened. You know, maybe at the time you didn't realize that you had a bunch of people logging on from foreign countries that, that you shouldn't have. And then you could go back and look at this in your data set. You could also pull them back in and run them through dashboards that we have and then see your irregular traffic patterns. You know, maybe you had a whole bunch of uh, successful logons in the middle of the night when you shouldn't have. You can also look at things from the firewall that has more of the, the bytes in, bytes out, and look for more data exfiltration type attacks that you probably just don't notice throughout the day. But All having right. that archiving ability to save that off and pull that back in later is obviously key. Um, the other one that we I highly recommend, and it's not on the slide here, but is to have Graylog tuned and ready to go for your investigations. I mean, inevitably you'll find something that happens, somebody will give you an IP address or a username and you need to do an investigation. Having a pre-built dashboard or pre-built search around that IP or name will help you quickly find that data. And hopefully within a few seconds, you can see what happened versus spending 20 to 30 minutes looking at the data going in. So having pre-built dashboards and searches ready, as well as having archiving to come back at a later time when you guys have time, is going to be key so you can keep effective during this. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, any other suggestions on, on how Greylock can help out in a, in a time like this? I mean, we went through quite a bit here. Um, is there anything else, uh, just, uh, you know, something that, that a company can look for on a, a regular basis? Um, for sure. There's many things that we obviously recommend um, outside of the VPN and the firewalls themselves is make sure that you're bringing in as much data as you can to archive it. I mean, you never know what you're going to miss until it's missed. <laughs> it's always kind of the, the chicken before the egg problem, right? You want to have it all in there. We can always sort that out and search on it later. Um, obviously, we can filter that stuff out through our pipelines and streams that we have. Um, to have the right dashboards ready to go, so to view your data, have the pre-built correlation rules and alert rules in here for different use cases, that's obviously going to be key. I would recommend that they keep up kind of with, with Graylog in general. Um, we're going to be releasing more security content around this to monitor and help with this, as well as keep track of our community forums and see what's out there, see what other people are doing, um, how, how they use Graylog on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, perfect. Thank you, Nick. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, you can reach out to us uh, at techtalks at graylog.com. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at graylog2, uh, LinkedIn at graylog, and Reddit at r uh, slash graylog forward slash. Um, we know uh, many of you are experiencing a surge in uh, log volume. Um, you might be holding back from uh, doing your investigations and adding uh, additional sources. I uh, like the VPN of firewalls to your uh, ingest volume. Uh, we understand the budgets are tight um, right now. And if, there, if you guys are experiencing any issues or worse yet, hitting your daily five gigabyte limit, uh, please call us, reach out. Uh, we get it. We're a small company ourselves, so we can uh, put together some packages for our small organizations and uh, uh, we can do what we can to, uh, to help you out. Uh, we have four remaining tech talks, so be on the lookout for an invitation. Um, they are uh, every Thursday for the next four weeks. Um, so uh, again, look for those uh, invitations and uh, join us at our uh, next uh, tech talk. Thanks everybody for joining today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on on the next one. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>